Hey everyone, Cody here. And I just finished the painting where we were doing the experiment of pouring it on and then spraying it to see if it moved. It was a failure if you haven't seen that video. But anyway, um, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do a poured painting with the same paints I've already got. I still have them out. And when I was kind of looking at the swirls of color that the that were left on the painting, the swirls were actually kind of cool looking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, and do a poured painting with these colors um, since I already have the paint out. So hopefully these cups won't spill and we're gonna go ahead and use the same colors. So red, yellow, purple, orange, white, black, if you haven't seen that video. So we're just gonna go ahead and pour these in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour them just a little bit, probably a quarter of the cup and we're going to add a little bit of water to it. There's, I've got some grass on my paint because this little old looking canvas that I'm, oh, I've got some crusties in there. Uh, this, this canvas that it's sitting on is, it was outside. So, all right, got that in there. Maybe just a little bit more. That's good. I think there was a little clump in the white. Uh, my paint's been sitting here for a while, so the edges have dried. Oh well. All right, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and get the orange. Can you guys even see this? Perfect. Cool, cool. All right, so let's get the orange in there. And there we go. All right, and then we'll do the purple. Perfect. This actually might be way too much paint, to be honest. Now that I'm looking at it. Right. Oh, the yellow is a little heavy. So, let's see if I can kind of, nope. Drizzle it in there. No, I can't. Okay. So, I have to pour it. Just use that to catch some of that and get it all over the place. Perfect. No, I got a dot on there already. I already have purple on there apparently. Okay, and then we will get our red on there. Give it a stir. Go ahead and put that stick in there. And pour. All right. Now we're good. It's going to drip a little bit. Good enough. Okay, so now that we've got our paints here, go ahead and take these sticks, move them over, and move that over here, and we'll give them just a little bit of water. I don't want to go too much. Um, if you go too much, then it just all kind of slides right off the canvas. You really just want it just enough, wet enough that it moves. Um, but not too wet that it, you know, slides off the canvas. So we're just going to add just a little bit of water here. Just to kind of loosen it up. You can kind of hear the consistency of it. Versus, it's like a lower pitch. So it, you, it doesn't really matter if it's like the same amount exactly, you'll know. You can just tell kind of on the pitch of how easily the cup, the stick hits the side of the cup, if it's uh, thin enough. I don't know how to explain that, but you know, once you've done it a couple times, you'll kind of understand. All right, and you know, a little bit more, I think that's good. And then red. This red is my favorite red. It's just like classic bright red, but just one of my favorite colors. All right, I think we're good there. Yeah, it probably needs just a little bit, just a tad more. And there we go. Cool. 
I think that was like one drop to be honest. Oh well, I don't wanna I don't wanna go too crazy with it. And if some of the paints are a little thicker than the rest, that's okay. Because the thinner paints will pull the thicker paints along. So it's kind of nice. Um, and I know a lot of people will do this thing where they kind of coat the whole canvas in white to get all the paints to run. We're not going to do that because the gloss enamel watered down should be thin enough that it kind of covers the whole canvas anyway. Um, so we shouldn't need it to like to make the paint slide. Essentially is uh, why a lot of people will prime the canvas once one solid color either to give it like a, a solid background, um, if they do like a negative space kind of painting, or to get the other paints to slide, we, we shouldn't need that. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to go ahead and kind of pour this paint on, but we're gonna do it in little pockets, right? We're not gonna just pour it all in one section. <clears throat> and so we're just gonna put our colors on. purple. We'll kind of cut through some of these other colors. Yellow. And then red. All right, here we go. I've got our colors here. Okay, so I think we're good. And now we can kind of do the actual pouring. So let's move everything away as far as we can. It's gonna get everywhere, I'm pretty sure. So we'll move these little cups and Start moving it. We're going to work it to the one corner and then work it to the other corner. I think this is kind of something that I picked up from other people who do poured paintings. They always do the corners first. And then this corner. All right, so now we can kind of basically go over the edges. And if it gets stuck somewhere, you just kind of nudge it along, you know. go bring it down this way okay I think it's reached that right there kind of nudge it along we'll bring it down this way And finally, <laughs> we've lost a decent amount of paint, so it doesn't want to necessarily move. You know, here on these edges, it's kind of gets stuck a little bit. Okay, so 
to be honest, um, I think there's a little bit too much variation. I do like this, this pocket of black and orange. Um, I kind of wish there was a little bit more white with the black and the orange. And I think I'm just going to add a little bit more of that. That. And then we have everything else. So let's go ahead and do the purple. And then we'll do a little bit of red up here with some black. <clears throat> All right, well, I didn't expect it to kind of make that that much of uh, one color. I guess I should have kind of expected it, but again, I don't do a whole lot of poured paintings. So, and I, I don't like having a lot of structure to them. Um, I, I don't know, I'm just not a fan of that. So we're going to try to kind of do what we did at the beginning but now that they're now that the paint is so spread out among the painting maybe we can get some bigger pockets of pure color as opposed to these little uh wrinkles i guess all right i think we're good there and we added all the colors i think we're good okay well, let's see what we can do here I guess I just like big, bold splotches of color as opposed to little tiny pockets, uh, at least in these poured paintings. Like right there, I would I would leave that right there. Like I I would consider that done. It's got a nice shiny texture all the way across. Um, let's see, I'm trying to use some of this paint right here for the edge. And I think it's probably good. Honestly, I'd probably just go around and uh, hit it with a black marker or black paintbrush. Unless, eh, I guess I wouldn't really need it. But just kind of look at it real quick just to see if it shifts. You can see that my glove dripped right, right there where that little dot is. But if I try to fix it, it'll probably just get worse. <clears throat> There's also a piece of orange. Um, remember I was talking about the, well, I might've talked about it in the other video, but the paint is kind of dried because it's been sitting in my garage. So it's got this little tiny piece in there. Um, it's like a little crusty that's in there. I don't think I really have anything to get it out. And even if I take it out, it'll probably, it's probably going to ruin the painting. I guess I could just absorb it into the paint. I suppose that's an option too.
eh, whatever, I'll leave it. So yeah, I'm gonna call that good. Let me uh, let me kind of zoom in for you guys because it can actually turn out pretty cool for a poured painting. Again, I don't do a whole lot of them, but um, it's got that nice, like, shiny, glossy coat to it. Now, here's the thing. This kind of goes back to the varnish thing. It's gloss enamel. So, if it dries, because poured paintings act a little different than some of the other paintings I do. Because you had so much water, they look shiny when they, like, when they're first down, but when they dry, it kind of kind of varies depending on how much water was added. So it could dry shiny like this. However, if it doesn't dry with an even shine or it comes out kind of matte because the water evaporated and, and took some of that shine with it, um, then once it dries, then yes, I would add varnish because it's either uneven or not glossy. Like say this painting right here, which you can kind of see you can see the light reflecting off of it because this is gloss enamel. Well, I didn't varnish this painting. I'm not going to because the, the shine is pretty even across it. Like even if I if I move out of the light and kind of move with it, you can see that the shine is even. But this being a poured painting, this might act a little differently because once it evaporates, it might take some of that shine with it. Uh, so on a painting like this, especially poured paintings, I feel like varnish actually does a poured painting well, this is why a lot of artists do resin. I've used resin and I couldn't make it work for me personally. I just made a mess and I got frustrated. Tried it a couple times, never worked out for me. But the people who can make resin work, I give them, I give them props because resin makes it look great. Now you could get away with just using a high gloss varnish, really quality varnish on it and make it look, you know, glassy. Then do that because that's going to make the poured paintings look a lot a lot better just just because they it gives them that extra little pop so if you do poured paintings yeah varnish might actually uh, be a good investment for you so anyway that's it for the video uh actually turned out better than i expected and uh you know just kind of having fun here so anyways guys appreciate you watching uh hopefully i'll see you in the next one take care god bless and see you then bye guys